This is Walking Your Talk, a podcast about leadership, authenticity, and courage. I'm Carolyn Taylor. I've worked with well over 100,000 leaders from every kind of organization, people who are committed to closing the gap between their values and those of their organization and how they actually show up every day. I wrote a book called Walking the Talk on how you change a corporate culture, but this is much more personal. If you want to be known as someone who walks their talk, then this podcast is for you. What you do speaks so loudly that I cannot hear what you say. That quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson really sets the scene for the topic of today, which is why is walking your talk difficult? What I want to cover today, and it's the first in the series, so I'm going to give you something of an overview, is what I've found that leaders need to do to be seen to be walking their talk. And in particular, I want to cover one trap that many leaders fall into. And I'll give you an exercise or something that you can practice during the week to get you into the groove of thinking about how you can walk your talk. And then I want to give you a longer term perspective of where this podcast is heading and what we'll be covering more deeply. So let me tell you a story of two leaders that I know to help you to see how subtle, how tricky this little piece is. So one client who has stuck in my mind for a long time, his name is John, very strong leader ran quite a large organization in the United Kingdom, but the head office of his organization was in another part of the world. And John was really strong on teamwork. So he would prepare all these slides on teams. He would get his team off sites. He would be driving his team on how important it was for teamwork. And he was finding that they weren't, he wasn't getting the behaviors he was looking for. So he contacted me one day and said, look, you know, not getting traction and really don't know why. So I said, okay, listen, I'll kind of observe. So I came and observed a couple of his meetings. And let me show you what happened. So, you know, he was John at his absolute best, you know, gung-ho on this, really enthusiastic textbook stuff. But then a really interesting thing was happening was that every five or 10 minutes, he would say something negative about head office. And then he would say it again. And then he would blame them for something else that had happened. This was in front of his team, in front of me, here, there, and everywhere. So see if you can work out the trap that he actually got himself into. Because he was talking about teamwork and expecting his team to display those behaviors. But there's a whole other team that John belongs to, and that's the global team, where he was a team member. And he wasn't being a team player on that team at all. He was sabotaging what they were doing, every step that he was taking. And it was a complete blind spot to him. So clearly, when you're working for John, you go, just a minute, he's not walking his talk here. So you can imagine what John's team might be pretty likely to do, which is that they'll leave the meeting and they'll go off to their team and they'll be starting to badmouth John and speak badly of what he's doing. And meanwhile, they'll be encouraging their team to be a team. And this is how it kind of cascades on. So I was thinking about John the other day because I was working with a very, very different leader, one of the best, I would say, at doing what is traditionally in large organizations now called enterprise, behaving as an enterprise leader. And Cecile has this ability to immediately, and as her first point of contact, reference what is happening at that enterprise level. So she was in a meeting, they were having a conversation about investment in products, and there was an opportunity for them to invest locally in a great product, which would have definitely produced you know, revenue for them and helped all of them get the bonus and do all the things that they would be wanting to do. But the first thing that she said was, this sounds good for us, but this is not in line with where I'm seeing the CEO going. He has a different vision. He has a vision which is about prioritizing a different set of products for a whole range of very powerful and appropriate reasons that work globally. But that might actually be a little bit of a cost to Cecile's own business. But that was the first thing she said. Whenever I interview her and I talk to her about what do you think the role, your role is, she immediately says, my role is to implement what's happening globally. 
Now, she's also very strong on teams. She does all the same things that John was doing. She encourages her team to be a team, but she walks it. And she walks it by showing that she can have the humility to be as good a team player as she is a team leader. And that's the difference. Her actions really do speak as loud as her words. And she is walking her talk. Now, you see the difference there. Both of those two, if I sat and interviewed them, or if you met people like them, and I'm sure you know people like that, you would say these are people who are passionate about teamwork. And that's true. But they have a big blind spot. They have a part of teamwork where their actions are speaking so loudly, as uh, the philosopher said, that we can't really hear what they're saying. And that's the trap. So why is that so important? Why is it important to understand what that trap is? Because as a leader, you're not just thinking about your own reputation and your desire to walk your talk. You also have a role to influence the behavior of others. I mean, these days, in many cases, leaders are accountable for the behaviors of others. You know, we're reading all the time in the press where leaders are in trouble because there's been behavior several levels down in their organization, which has been not appropriate. So how do you build a culture? How do you build such a strong role modeling in yourself about being and living and walking these values that other people will follow you? First thing to say is it's got to be really strong. I will often say to people if they're doing some kind of feedback survey that you need to be scoring a five on a five point scale because you've got to be so strong at this, so authentic, so courageous in the way that you do this, that others want to follow you, that others want to go to the trouble of changing their behavior because they are inspired by yours. So you get walking your talk right, and it impacts not only your reputation, but the behavior of others in your team, and ultimately, of course, the reputation of your organization. So there's an exercise that I have for you to practice this week. And every week in every episode, I'll give you an exercise that you can work on so that this really becomes a personal development program. And the exercise today is a very simple one to get us going is just take a piece of paper, two columns, and think about a particular value that you want to embed, that you want to live and that you want your people to be living too. And then just put two columns, decisions that you've made in the past week that you believe really demonstrate that that value is something that you hold dearly. And any decisions that you think make that don't demonstrate that, even if your intention was good, that other people might interpret as not walking your talk on that value. So write that list. And then during this next week, become very conscious whenever there is a decision that you're making, is this going to demonstrate that I'm serious about this? Is this an action that people will notice? Or is this something which people will say, ah, you know, they compromise. And there's always a really strong reason why you would compromise, but other people might say that you compromised. So that's the exercise. So let me finish today by just giving you a broader picture of where I want to take this over the next weeks and months. Next week's going to be on symbols. It's going to be on the particular decisions that you can make, which really amplify others seeing that you're walking your talk. So we're going to continue the theme of where we are today, pick up on the exercise you've just done and take that more deeply. Then after next week, I'm going to pick a number of very specific values. Things like accountability, simplicity, empowerment, customer centricity, working as one team, all of those values that I think many of you will aspire to. And we're going to do a deep dive on one of those over three or four episodes. We're going to look at what it takes, what it actually takes for you to live that. What are the specific behaviors that you can practice? How can you build it? And we're also going to look at the traps and what might be holding you back from that. And there are some very individual 
things that will hold you back based on my experience working with all these leaders on each one of those. So please join me next week when we will continue this journey by looking at some of the unconscious messages you may be sending about what you really value, which may not be in line with your intentions. If they're not, we'll talk about how to change them. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you next week.